make 48 thin straws, you'll need 100 grams, 4 ounces, of self-raising flour, plus a little extra for dusting the work surface, quarter of a teaspoon each of salt and hot paprika, or you could use cayenne pepper. 50 grams, 2 ounces of cold butter, diced. 75 grams, 3 ounces of Stilton cheese, grated. 1 egg, beaten. Before you start, preheat your oven to 180 degrees centigrade, that's 350 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4 and line a large baking tray with some parchment paper. Now depending on how large your tray or oven is, you may need to actually line a couple of trays. Place the flour, paprika and salt in a sieve and sift it into a large mixing bowl and hold it as high as possible without actually making a mess on your work surface because you need to actually incorporate some air into the flour which should make the finished pastry a little lighter. Give that a little stir and then Add your cubed butter. Now it should be as cold as possible and cut the cubes quite small because then it's easier to rub into the flour. And then simply using your fingertips rub the butter into the flour and once again Bring it up as high as you can without making a mess, just to incorporate more air. Continue in this way until the mixture resembles breadcrumbs. So once you've rubbed the butter into the flour, it doesn't matter if there's a couple of larger pieces of butter left, but it should be mostly rubbed in. Stir in your Stilton. Now I would mention that Stilton can be very soft, especially if it's at room temperature. So in order to grate it, you'll need to have it very cold straight from the refrigerator. And then just cut that in with a knife until it's all mixed thoroughly. You can actually use that rubbing in method again very lightly if you prefer to use your hands rather than a knife but do make sure that it's quite well distributed and it's all mixed thoroughly and be very light with it and incorporate as much air as you can by lifting the mixture quite high out of the bowl So once that's done, add just a quarter of the beaten egg initially. We're going to use the rest of it to glaze the top of the cheese straws. But you don't want too wet a mixture, so it's best to err on the side of caution and just add a quarter of it and then just stir it with a knife until the dough starts to come together. And to tell if you have enough egg added, just take a part of the mixture and pinch it together and if it comes together easily then you've added enough egg. So finally bring the mixture together with your hand you're going to turn it onto a floured work surface. So lightly flour a work surface with a little extra flour. Place 
your dough on the floured work surface and just make sure you bring it together but don't press it too hard because we want to keep all the air that we managed to incorporate when we sifted the flour and rubbed the butter in. Now make it into an oblong shape as much as you can and then flour a rolling pin and roll it out to about 30 centimetres, that's 12 inches long and 6 inches wide and about a quarter of an inch thickness. Now the dough is actually quite soft so you will have to make sure you keep your surface and your pin quite well floured. So once you've got it all rolled out thinly, you need to cut it into straws. And the straws are actually quite thin. They're going to be about six millimetres or quarter of an inch. So it's best to use a sharp knife and if you just dip the tip into some flour you'll find it will cut through the pastry a lot more easily. And keep dipping your knife in flour every once in a while just to make sure it doesn't stick. So I've done about half of my mixture and I've cut each of my strips into half again to form smaller straws. Once you've cut all your straws, place them onto the lined baking tray. Space them relatively well apart. Now I'm going to brush these with a little egg wash before I put them into the oven. But before I do that, I just want to show you a couple of little optional things that you can do. If you keep some of the pastry and actually roll it into a length about 8 inches, making sure that your work surface is still well floured and then just bring the ends together and pinch them together and this can be used to serve the straws once it's baked it will be crisp and then you just pop the straws in and you can serve them in a novel manner the other thing I want to show you that you could do is actually to twist the straws. It actually works better with a longer straw and if you just twist both ends in the opposite direction you get this rather nice twisty effect. So brush the tops with the remaining beaten egg and then place it in your preheated oven and bake for between 10 and 15 minutes until lovely golden brown and firm to the touch. After about 10 minutes, once they're golden brown and crisp, transfer to a wire tray and allow them to cool before serving. Stilton cheese straws. They were so delicious, I ate half of them before I actually did this picture. Excellent served with drinks or cocktails, or just for a wonderfully delicious snack.